Here we are at example four from our 2.7 set of notes. We're asked to find the derivative for the following. And it's really important to note that what we're actually differentiating with respect to, uh, because that will actually make all the difference in terms of you know, what our derivatives come out to be. Now, for our first one, we see that we're taking the derivative of x with respect to x. And as a result, you would end up then with the derivative of x on top with respect to x. And this will just simplify out to be one. For two, we see that we're taking the derivative of y with respect though, not to x now, with respect to y. And pretty much it would behave exactly the same as one did. So we'd end up then with the derivative of y with respect to y, which again just comes out to be one. Here three is kind of that same scenario. The derivative of t with respect to t, well that's just dt over dt, which again just comes out to be one. So it's essential though to really kind of, you know, look and see what are you actually taking the derivative with respect to. Now for our fourth one, we're taking the derivative of y with respect to x. Well, as a result, that would just come out to be dy over dx. For five, we're taking the derivative of x squared with respect to x. Well, here is actually a chain rule kind of happening where this squared term would be considered your outside most piece and your x would be considered your innermost. So using kind of that chain rule, we would end up then with two rewriting the inside x times the derivative with respect to x of that inside piece x. And so this would simplify out to be 2x times d, the derivative of x with respect to x, so that would be dx over dx. But again, this is just one. So you'd end up then with 2x times one, which again is just 2x. For six, we're taking the derivative of y squared with respect to x. Well, it's again, pretty much a chain rule. Our outside most function would be that squared. Our inside piece would be this y. So we're gonna treat this just like a chain rule. In that event, we would end up then with two, rewriting the inside y. We've already subtracted one from that exponent, so that's fine. Now we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x of that inner function y. Well then this will just simplify out to become two times y. Derivative of y with respect to x is just dy over dx. Moving on to seven. We're trying to take the derivative of t to the fourth with respect to x. Again, it's very, very much behaving like we saw with six. Our four would be considered our outside most piece, our inside would be t. So then we would end up with four, we rewrite the inside, t, reducing that exponent by one, giving us three. Again, that was pretty much just our outside part. Now we have to take the derivative with respect to x of our inside function, t. And as a result, our derivative would come out to be 4t cubed dt over dx. So taking the derivative of t with respect to x. Now for eight, we're gonna go ahead and rewrite the square root of y. That's the exact same thing as saying y raised to the one half power. And now we're pretty much in the same scenario as we were seeing with some of the others. This one half would be considered your outside most part, y would be considered your innermost function. And as a result, we would end up then with one half, we rewrite the inside function y, subtract one from that exponent, so now it's negative one half, and then we have to take the derivative with respect to x of that inside function y. So pretty much just a chain rule happening here. Simplifying this, we would end up then with one over two. We can bring this y raised to the negative one half power down to the bottom making it now a positive one half power. And then taking the derivative of y with respect to x, that would just be dy over dx. And then we can go ahead and rewrite this as uh, dy over dx with this two out in front, 
and our square root of y. You could rewrite it this way. I would probably more lean towards writing it as 1 over 2 times the square root of y dy over dx. Just because a lot of times you're actually trying to solve for your dy dx. But you could see it in this form as well. Again, though, that is example four from our 2.7 set of notes.